Hey everybody, welcome back to another Overthrow Disc Golf video. This is the first of our long-awaited forehand series. We will be joined in the series by Josh, who will be building his forehand from the ground up. Grab a driver, let's get it. First, we absolutely have to talk about the grip. If you do not have a good forehand, do not even consider skipping this part. Because when I hear somebody does not have a good forehand, it is almost entirely, or at least in part, due to an improper grip. So let's get that straight first. We will be doing all of this with fairway and distance drivers. I don't want you using a mid or a putter for these examples because those can be held a little differently, have a little bit of a different grip, and uh, can be released a little bit differently. So, first thing I want you to do Take your little pea shooter here, all right? See this web between your thumb and your index finger? I want you to take the edge of the disc and I want you to cram that sucker in there. You don't have to be crushing bone here, but it needs to be pretty tight. Next, I want you to take the pad of your middle finger and I want you to put it where the flight plate meets the rim, like so. Not totally on the flight plate, not totally on the rim, but in between in that little crack there. And then take your index finger and go ahead and stack it on top. Some people find it more comfortable to put their index finger like this in the power grip, that is fine as well. Whichever grip you choose there, go ahead and take this and with it in the web of your fingers and with your middle finger in that crack, go ahead and slide and secure that grip. You should feel that this is pretty firm here. Let me flip the disc over, right? Your thumb is gonna be here. So you've got a pinch between your index finger and your thumb. If you had your thumb in the middle of the flight plate like this, you would not feel that secure pinch. So we're gonna put our thumb kind of where the rim meets the flight plate. The most important thing is that you feel this secure in the web and then a nice pinch here. Now let's talk about the outside two fingers. It's important for these two fingers to be together and I tell people to have the edge of the disc somewhere around this top joint of the ring finger. So it should be sitting somewhere here. A couple bad examples. If you had it up here, that's not going to be secure. You're not gonna control the outside of the disc well enough and you're gonna have some nose angle issues. This is also incorrect because you're not controlling the outside of the disc at all, right? So somewhere about here. And now you should feel that there's a, a pinch between these two outside fingers and then your middle finger, right? So you should have a very solid grip here and it should not be able to wobble as you move your arm back and forth. It should be solid. Now that we've got the proper grip, let's look about, let's look about. Let's look about. Let's look about let's look and about. see if we can find the release. The Dost release? thou have my release? <laughs> now that we've got the proper grip, let's talk about the release. Boom. So we wanna make sure that the disc is leaving our hand cleanly with spin. The first thing you need to know about a release on any drive, backhand, forehand, whatever, is that you are not actively releasing the disc. You are not opening up your hand. What happens is that you're gripping the disc and you pull the disc in a straight line and the disc wants to continue traveling in that straight line and your hand wants to follow through and your hand is simply not strong enough to maintain the grip on the disc and the disc rips out. For finesse shots, that can be a little different, but we're talking about drives here. Now, with the backhand, it's very simple to get spin because the disc is on the inside of our arm. As we go to open up our arm, it's naturally spinning. With the forehand, if we kept the neutral wrist that we kept with the backhand, we would get zero spin because as we go to pull straight, there's no rotation on this disc. Unlike the neutral wrist that we use on the backhand, where it's not bent either direction, the forehand uses a loaded wrist. In order to get spin on a forehand, you have to get the wrist loaded back so that when you pull it forward, you then snap your wrist forward and this is what creates the spin on the forehand. If you don't have an active wrist on the forehand, you will get wobble, which happens anytime you have more torque than you have spin. We have verified that Josh does not have an already good forehand. Josh has already been caught up on everything that you've watched in this video. Now I'm gonna check his grip and we're going to get into the throwing motion. There. Yep, right. good, tucked in, good, solid, good pinch here. Mm -hmm. Good pinch here, yeah, yeah, I can see the white of his knuckles. That's it. Now, is that different from what you were doing before? Very much so. So let's see, just with the grip adjustment, 
um, if he's got any improvement here. Looking primarily for less wobble, more spin. Okay. Not bad, not bad. How'd, you, how'd it feel? It felt pretty good, actually. I, I, I thought it would feel super weird. It didn't really feel that weird. I felt like it came off everything pretty good. Josh just asked if it mattered what kind of disc. Other than the speed, I don't care if it's overstable, understable, doesn't matter. What we're looking for is we're trying to eliminate wobble um, because that means that you're getting good spin. And then when you have spin on the disc, they fly properly. And then you can start learning to hyzer flip and stuff like that or just straight out pump them. What I want to do is I want to show Josh the correct feeling because uh, a lot of people, when they go to throw their forehands, bring their arm all the way through and they kind of skip over this really important moment where you get all the spin, the end of the forehand whip, you might say, where you get this little snap here. So I'm actually going to have Josh throw a few here and you're going to stop your hand up front, not painfully so but you're gonna exaggerate the stopping of the hand. Of course, when you throw, you're naturally gonna have some more momentum that's gonna keep the arm going further in front of you, but what you don't wanna do is just have the arm going forward all at the same rate. You have to have this hit in there. So I'm gonna go through a few drills here, set Josh up to make sure that we're feeling the spin. The most important thing in eliminating wobble and making sure that your disc fly straight is spin, as we've already mentioned, I'm gonna set Josh up and I'm going to work with some drills that just get him to feel this moment where the disc leaves the hand with good spin. Now I'm gonna set up his feet and everything, Mikey, like yep. we would do with tennis lessons. Um, why don't you take a couple steps back off these discs here? So what I want you to do is I wanna take your back foot and I want it to be perpendicular, so just mirror me. Perpendicular, and your front foot should be somewhere between straight and uh, you know 20 degrees-ish. I prefer, Eagle throws it straight with his foot straight and his feet are in a line. Other people throw with their foot more like 20 degrees and their hips are angled. I like this because you get a little easier access to the hips and you don't lock off the hips. Let's start with your left elbow up and your hand kind of on the outside of the disc like this. Man, I wish I were, could do this lefty. Can I do it lefty? Oh, that's so weird. I can't. I'm not quite to that level yet. Arm up. This is gonna create the space away from his body. I just wanna get him in the right stance. And let's get this elbow here. Tight here to reach. And you can have this hand on the front, kind of on the front of the disc. This is just a placeholder to make sure that he's not pulling the disc in the wrong spot. So set yourself up like this. Get your legs something like that. And from here, I just want him to snap a few discs forward. So he's gonna start with his wrist back. So go ahead and have it pull your wrist back. And then you can do a little bit of backswing is fine. And then just spin it forward. So it should look something like this. Pull back. And he's just gonna see if he can get this little snap moment. We're not looking for distance or a desirable flight, just a little wobble. Not bad. So I want you to feel free to rotate. So go ahead and get in this back position, wrist loaded, and just experiment with this little rotation right here. Just let your body go. Yeah. You see, if, you'll re if you guys rewind the video, you'll see that his left arm got tucked in the way, right? So just rotate a few times like this. Yes. Everything's nice and loose. And then when you're ready, just give it a nice snap and stop your hand. Not bad. Not bad. Now, if I were really wanting them to feel this, I'd bring a hammer. So I'm gonna show you first. Take your hammer, hold it like this, right? Like your forehand grip. And if you use this hammer, you can feel the forward hit, right? And eventually, if you were out in a field, this would be awesome. You should spin the hammer and I would have you release it. So you ready, Mikey? Yeah, that boy goes. Right, it's rotating this way instead of pushing forward. So the hammer is just a tool to help us exaggerate the hit. I wouldn't use too big of a hammer. <laughs> yeah, don't go, don't toss it first. No. Just get your, like your forehand grip. Yeah, same thing with your legs. And just feel, you're gonna feel where it wants to hit. It's gonna hit about here. And so you're gonna feel it. Don't release it yet. Yeah. Just go through the motion a few times here. And you should feel that snap. Now I'm gonna give you a disc before I let you throw the hammer. Feel that same spot, should be hitting about here and your wrist should be hitting the same spot. Boom, go ahead and throw the disc when you're ready. Same feeling, focus on the same feeling here. Good, 
good spin. Yeah, same spot. Good, and you can hear the sound. I don't know if you guys can hear the sound, but I can hear the sound. Okay, we're gonna let him toss this bad boy. All right, so you should feel it, and we should see the hammer rotating sideways. Yeah, less rotations than mine, but it's because I got a little more action on mine. So the more rotations you can get on that, the better. But right direction, right, it didn't just flop out. All right, so now I'm just gonna let Josh experiment with that and feel that hit, and if I see that they're coming out with too much wobble, I'll go back to the hammer until he gets that feel and gets the wrist activated. If they're coming out nice, we're gonna keep throwing discs. See you in a few minutes. So we just did some reps of that, doing much better. The sound, I wish I could describe the sound. Do, sorry, I've like itched my nose and was like. <laughs> We just did about, I don't know, seven, eight throws, something like that. The sound it's making is much better. It makes a much different sound and a much different feeling, right? Oh yeah, much, much different. Yeah, when you get that good, when you get that good snap on it. Um, a few things that I'm looking for that I didn't mention, I didn't mention a lot of technical stuff because the most important thing you can do is get a feeling correct. I wanna get this feeling of the hammer rotating, right? If you just spent your time you know, a day, a week, whatever, working on getting that feeling of the hammer rotating, of feeling kind of the weight on the outside of the disc, and that snap, you would be way better off than me telling you a bunch of technical things. But, since this is building it, I have to talk about a few things that I'm looking for um, that I did not address with him because I was looking at the overall feeling. So, a few things that I'm looking for is go ahead and get in your stance here. Other than the legs, I'm looking when he does this, I want to see that he's free to move, to open. Go ahead and do your rotation here, and then uh, we'll look. Yeah, I want to see that this shoulder's opening up, right? That he's not stopping himself. The first one, no worries. The first one, he ended up stopping and his hand stayed, so I told him to rotate. So I'm looking for the shoulders rotating, the hips rotating, all of it rotating. I'm looking to make sure that this elbow is tight to the body when he goes to throw here. So go ahead and go through it. You see when he takes back, go ahead and take back and freeze. You see there's elbow separation here. That's good and natural. I didn't address it, I didn't tell him to do it because he's naturally doing it. If you're trying to take your disc too far back and your elbow's staying tight, you're gonna end up pulling the disc behind your body. And that leads to the last thing that I'm looking for is to make sure that he's just taking the disc on the right side of his body. That's why I had him start like this, because if you have your left hand on your disc, you're gonna create distance from your body so you're not pulling it back behind you. Those are the things that I'm looking for. Moving of the shoulders, of the hips, that his elbow is tight here. If he hadn't had a huge reach back, I would not address the separation of the elbow. When you wanna throw further, you will separate the elbow and do what I call airing the armpit. So you're airing that armpit and then it'll come here. We'll talk about that more in a future video, I'm sure. But uh, these are all things that I looked for and if you're looking at your own form on video, you'll wanna check for. Now, we have to address the follow through. The thing that you look for in the follow through is just that it's a natural movement after you release the disc. Because some of you have issues with rolling your wrist over, right? Your wrist cannot actually roll, it's your forearm that pronates, right? Because in sports, we're used to pronating. Um, but what you'll see is that with Josh's first throw that he showed us, he rolled it over, right? And then he didn't roll any of them over after that. That's because we got the hit at the right spot. The issue is not that you pronate your arm, it's when you pronate your arm. So if it's natural for you to release here and then pronate afterwards, that's fine. Finishing with your palm up does not have to happen for every throw. If you throw a fan grip, which we did not talk about, like Ricky Wysocki, you're going to finish, since your hand's coming in like this, you're going to finish with your palm up because that's what your grip is. And so to finish like this is natural. If you have a stacked grip or a power grip, your hand will naturally finish differently. All right, so if I have a stacked grip, it's okay for me after the disc is gone to roll it over. It's when you pronate your forearm. So if you're worrying about follow through, just naturally follow through. And if your hand in the hit is up, you can keep your hand up. If your hand's more sideways with a stack grip, 
you can finish more sideways. So homework for this. Just remove all the vowels from my. Okay, homework for this video, very simple. It's for you to get the feel at the moment of release, right? You can do that, do a little home renovation with your hammer, whatever, go out to a field with a hammer, great, right? But you wanna make sure that you feel the disc, even just in this right here, that you feel the disc trying to rip out of your hand. And then practice that, practice that, practice that, and then we'll see you in the next video. Perfect. <laughs> I, I ain't good stuff, That's it.